Talk with Darlene P. L. Lewis. I am Darlene P. L. Lewis. You know, every time we have an opportunity to sit with someone, it is an honor that we have you as our audience, as our stars, who is supporting the show livelihood and the ability for the show to continue. So we want to start off by thanking you for always tuning in, for watching and for sharing. You are watching Real Talk with Darlene P. L. Lewis, and we'll be right back. And today, have I got a treat for you? Yes, I said it. We have the honor to be in the studio, in person, with this busy man who was able to allocate some time to sit down and talk with us and get real. Are you ready to get some real information? Well, you want to know who this guest is? None other than. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. None other than Tom Carney. Tom. And I have crossed paths over the years. You know, I'm a resident of Delray Beach, and I am biased towards our city, our beautiful city. And so Tom has a message for us. And I would like to give him the floor, and I'd like to give him the opportunity to share what that message is. So, Tom, welcome to Real Talk. Thank you for having me, Darlene. You are welcome. And it's been wonderful seeing you again. After, I know. After these years, we and it's funny you remembered me. That's good. Well, you, you're, you're a memorable person. <laughs> oh, I thank you. Thank you. So, I didn't pay him to say that. No, she didn't. No. <laughs> so, Tom, you are running for mayor of Delray mayor Beach. Mayor of Delray Beach. Right. This is not your first run. This is not. I, um, I actually served uh, in Delray. I started out... Uh, with the Housing Authority, I was there for nine years. Uh, excuse me, eight years. I was the chairman of the Housing Authority. I then went to the CRA, which you know well, yes. the Community Redevelopment Agency. I spent seven years there. Uh, last years of those, as the vice chairman. Then I was elected to the city commission, and then I ended up uh, becoming the mayor of Delray Beach, oh. um, and got to spend some time as the mayor. Really enjoyed it, uh, but I enjoy the city so much, and I love serving the city. So um, it's been. I left there in 2013 and have decided because I really think that, this, that the, the time is right and mm -hmm. I think the city has kind of strayed off the course where I think right. it should be okay. um, to, to, have, to, to come back and, 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 and serve the city again as, as mayor. Well, you, <laughs> you know, there's, there's, look, we've done a lot of things right in Delray. We've done a lot, we've of, done a lot things. of things right, yes. and I'm the first to say that. Um, but I do think that there are things that need improvement. I think that the, there are things, challenges facing the city, uh, which are kind of right within my skill set. Okay. And I think that I can bring uh, a unique perspective on trying to pro solve, solve some of the problems mm -hmm. that we have. And some of them are longer standing, some of them are newer problems. But I think that, that I have the ability to do that. And I th also have a very good ability of working with every uh, uh, you know, other people. So, I'm a, so you have uh, great people skills. Well, yes. I, I think, well, I've always been in, in government, you see, it's, it's having consensus skills are really very important. You know, yes. you don't try to carve out a position and you stick with it. You, I mean, the whole idea behind government should be compromised mm -hmm. because, you know, everybody has good ideas. Yes. And you try to fashion some solution yes. that meets everybody's objective, protects you know, the property interest for one and the, the other interest, preservation interest on the other, and you, and you try to get those done and hopefully come out with a, a something that's workable for everybody and that everybody feels good about. So you said that you were the mayor and you left office in 2013. Yes. So what was the reason you ran the first time? What were you able to do in your tenureship? I had a very short ten tenure as mayor, so okay. I really didn't get a chance to achieve much. Okay. I had a lot of good ideas, I thought, um, and some of them were implemented after I left, which is always fine. Which is I mean, good. That's, 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 that's flattery, <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, so, um, and, 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 but I, I, I 
wanted to stay longer. I really, it, uh, it wasn't to be at the time, uh, but I think it is now. Okay. And uh, the stars have aligned, and uh, the, my support has been, since announcing, has been really tremendous. Nice. And, f and actually from quarters that I never expected. So it's always a, uh, a good thing when people say, you know, you bring in that you have the right skills now to do mm -hmm. this job. And so. So you have the support. You've been in office, so you yep. know how it operates. You know who some of the um, key players are. Well, yeah, but there's I, also I, been some changes. There's been a lot of changes. I actually have a, a unique perspective, uh, whereas when I left, when I left, sitting behind the dais, mm -hmm. I had the opportunity as an attorney to practice uh, law representing uh, citizens and things in front of the dais. So mm -hmm. there's really no one up there that ever has had, had that. Both. So until you've had the opportunity to work you know, as uh, the outsider with the city with the to city. try to accomplish mm -hmm. things, you really sometimes don't understand the, the processes and how that. difficult it is for the average person yes. who approaches the city to get what seems to be a simple thing accomplished takes... Like approving a driveway. Well, you, talk about the, you know, well, I'm just saying uh, driveway, but it's probably more complex well, than no, building it, a two-story. It actually isn't. I mean, you get... I mean, it was taking months for people to get fence permits. It was taking months... And, and so... You know, it, it, it really just rattled my, my, my <laughs> system. It rattled you. Yes, it rattled me. I said, this is, this is not the way government yeah. should work. You know, government has to have better outreach. Government, I mean, we, we've got issues that we've faced in this city for 10 years that just haven't been addressed okay. uh, for one reason or another. And I'm not, not pointing blame. I'm not no. saying, you know, no. but if for some reason they weren't. But I'm the type that actually will go head on and address something and see if I can come up with a solution, whether it may be the most popular or not popular thing. Mm -hmm. At least it, we try to accomplish and get th think some things done. So that's really what I'm Well, in your about. last tenure, you had some projections, you had some ideas that didn't go into fruition while you were in office right. behind the dais, but then afterwards, well, so that's kudos to you. So that means they were listening, they well, liked I mean, the ideas. There was, there were, listen, I thought they, the members of the community, we, we, we've, we've been very lucky in Delray. Uh, to have a lot of good people, uh, you know, step up and want to serve on boards as you did twice. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, as you did twice. Um, and um, and but, but so the city has been very lucky generally mm -hmm. to get good people to s serve on these boards, which are in many respects thankless. What I like with the city of Delray, and I'm biased because I'm a resident, I've right. been a resident for over 40 years, but also too because I don't know any other city. I've never lived in any other city. I left Haiti and came here and I've been in Delray all my life. And so um, is the caliber of people that I see who are volunteering their time. Right. That's my point. And various, there's, I think when I spoke with Jim, he was saying there's like 25 um, boards I didn't know there were so many. I knew there was preservation. I guess the I knew of the ones that were more close to home for me. Yep. Like, yep. can I uproot this tree and put this new one in, or do I have to replace the oh, tree? Oh, we got to speak to my the arborist on that. Oh, I, don't I know. know. You know Believe so. me, I know. I just left my yard alone. Is it a, is it a contributing tree or not? <laughs> you gotta, exactly. Uh, uh, is it authentic to Dare? Is it from way back when? We right, can't do that. Right. Right. Even though it's killing my grass and everything else. Well, that's going if it was on. killing your grass, they'd work with you on that. I mean. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I'm just saying, I didn't know about all the different variations right. of um, all these various um, organizations yeah. and, and these are volunteers. And it really gives an opportunity for citizen participation yes. because many in many instances, citizens don't really have an opportunity to work in their city to understand what their city does. And when they have the opportunity to serve on a board, whether it's an education board or mm -hmm. a planning board or mm -hmm. a historic board mm -hmm. or, or, you know, a site yes. plan board, exactly. you get a chance to see... You the know, workarounds. The, the work, and you get to see how the city staff works. Yes. And we have, by the way, we have been very lucky with our, with our city yes. staff. I mean, I, yes. I, you know, knock on wood. It, I mean, <laughs> they, we, we are so lucky to have uh, the city staff that we but have. But, you know, one thing I want to share is that um, a lot of times as residents, we don't know the makings, the workarounds, and what needs to, what needs to go into approving a permit or right. approving a landscape or paving the alleyways and so forth. And we get these letters and we either 
don't pay any attention to them or we're like, oh, I'll go to the city commissioner meeting and I'll voice my opinion and so forth. What I like is the um, notices that we get on our doors. Yes. And thank God they're not that many. When I was on planning and zoning, it was every week I was getting a bunch of stuff. And it was it was a full-time job. By the way, planning and zoning is a full-time job. Oh, my I, I mean, God. It's, it's very, if, if, if when you, they ask me for a second term, I'm like, oh, no, I'm good. You know, when, <laughs> when, when, you, when on that particular board, you know, you have to take it very seriously because yes. you, 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 a lot of... A lot of people are depending on yes. on a on, on a proper solution there. You've yes. got not just the applicants and the developers yes. and the city, but the you also have the neighborhood. The neighborhood. You have everyone. Oh. So it's very important. One night we were there till ten o'clock at night, maybe after ten. I was I was like, okay, yeah, I'm not renewing, because I had already put in my my full eight hour day at work, and I had kids at home. And then I'm volunteering my time, and I was like, everybody was coming and complaining. They didn't want. I think it was the Atlantic Project, yeah. the one on the Le, yeah, uh, Atlantic Crossing. Atlantic. Yeah. yeah, it was. A, it was a. It was took, took up a lot. Took a lot of time for a it lot of uh, a lot of people, and it, it, and it still is. So it's, oh it still has little issues rising from time to time. So, what do you feel that you're going to be able to do differently? Well, you know, I I, I think that I as I say, I think I bring a unique perspective to this to this um, to this commission. Uh, apart, I mean, I have a great deal of historical knowledge, yes, which is, that is which true. is really kind of lacking at yes. the moment in City Hall. No fault of anybody, but just mm -hmm. the way timing worked. Um, and I also have a degree of, of you know, I, I am a lawyer, and I'm used to, and I'm used to reading contracts, and I'm mm -hmm. used to. I was involved for years doing municipal finance. I was, a, I was a underwriter's counsel for a variety of municipal finance deals. Okay. You know, all these are all ways that government finances themselves yeah, exactly. and, and understanding, and. Just that happens right be within my 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 comp area of competence mm -hmm. as as a practicing attorney. So I think I bring these things which they don't have at the moment, which mm -hmm. are going to be extremely important for the okay. city. Um, and I I do think that I have a, a great ability to work with others and and come get consensus, uh, which I, I I think is underrated to to have a consensus there yeah. because I you know constant votes of three to two and three to two and three to two, yeah. you know I like five to nothing. I like everyone <laughs> kind of coming at and you know if everybody nobody's maybe happy with the t the final uh, the final outcome, mm -hmm. but. If nobody's happy, that means probably everybody got a, a, a pretty fair square deal in, exactly. in, 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 in... And what at the end of the day is not making yourself happy is what's best for the overall city. I have a tendency to look at the city from 10,000 feet in the air to see how all of it fits together nice. so that I don't worry, you know, you'll have this particular neighborhood is worried about this or this particular neighborhood is about this. You know, I'm one of those, you know, rising tide, you know, raises all boats type of person. Mm, so okay. I try to find if I can encourage pockets of prosperity in different parts of the city that ultimately the entire city will benefit. And that's really what my objective is, mm -hmm. is to really tr try to figure out how I can make this city better for the residents, as, as in the entire residents, but in particular some of the residents in particular neighborhoods that are trying to get certain things done. And exactly, I, who has language barriers like a Latino and the Haitian um, uh, Haitian Americans that are in the area. I know Osceola, Osceola Park. I always say Osceola you know, Park. Osceola Park has a great number of Haitian residents. Great number. And a lot of times they don't feel like they have a voice. And years ago, I'm dating myself, aging myself. When Perlman yeah, was in Perlman. office, uh -huh. Brenda Montega and, and several Jim other Montague, commissioners. Yeah. We we had a group. I can't remember what it was called, but I think Mac was on there, Al Jacke, um, Joe Bernadelle, myself, and several other people. Um, and we got together and we we were explaining how be best to communicate with these people. Right. And it's still TV. It's still radio. And it's still, yes, you can send it in writing in English and Creole, but sometimes you're dealing with um, homeowners who don't who can't read. Right. And so, yes, you can send it in Spanish and send it in English. They'd have to find somebody else to read it for them, to interpret. But at least you're sending it to them and informing them. So that's something that I feel like we still need to continue to work on. Oh, I think it's, it's, it's uh, I have had this conversation uh, with Madame Gary, who I know you know, mm -hmm. uh, about the, the importance of Im improving that, that conversation yes. between, in particular, the Haitian community and, and City Hall. You know, I, I to the point where I've, I have suggested in the past and continue to suggest, um, you know, a, a closer, you know, like yes. an ombudsman type to work yes. between the, 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 yes. the cities. I was one of the first way back when, hundred years ago, um, 
when you look good for a hundred years. I look man. darn good for a hundred years. I tell you, <laughs> modern medicine is just is Listen, particularly. You need to tell me what you're using so I can stay. Look, like I'm this. just happy I have my hair. You know, so I mean, many of my classmates, men classmates, do not don't have hair. But, okay. Um, when I came across an accident, I think it was like 2011, and there was it was a, it was a an accident right at Congress Avenue in in Linton, and and the, mm -hmm. there was a Haitian vehicle involved and some other vehicle involved. Mm -hmm. And I found that the, the witness, mm -hmm. uh, a Haitian woman, mm -hmm. very charming lady, and I mm -hmm. did speak a little French, so I did speak to her a little bit. My okay. wife is half French, and in fact, my son who sits over there has second cousins that are actually Haitian descent but living in Paris. Okay. So another story. Okay. That's another story. <laughs> but I went, I went to, uh, so we had a brief, and, and it occurred to me mm -hmm. that she was very reluctant to speak to the police officers, oh, not yes. because she didn't know what was going oh, on. Oh, she yes. was afraid of, of the speaking. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I went to then Chief uh, Stranese and oh, said, Oh my God, I remember him. Yeah, and I said, <laughs> you know, I said, you really should, we, we need to think about, I mean, we have a population here of 10, 15% mm -hmm. of the city, mm -hmm. you know, where English is not their, not their, their, their first, first language. language yeah. And we really need to have more. Haitian police officers, mm -hmm. and that was when they started the program at Atlantic High School to, to start yes. getting the, the the Haitian police. Joe Bernadelle, Joe Bernadelle was very helpful was in it, involved, yep. and 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 so we suddenly now I'm had. I think this probably was around the time we had the. I can't remember what the group was called, but I think that's around the time. It was, no, it was after. It was that was because I was on the commission there, so a little bit would have been so just just, that, just after, after that. But after it was that, but okay. it was it was certainly a successor to what you were yes. doing. It was a successor to what you were yes. doing. And so, and, and we found that all of a sudden that woman who would be reluctant to speak to the one police officer would be, you know. More comfortable. Absolutely yes. verbose. Yes. With, with, the, with the Haitian police officer, because she could speak mm -hmm. and, and, could, and, and, and say the nuances of conversation mm -hmm. without fear of being misunderstood. And but so, one thing I know that the city of Delray did, and I want to say Lake Worth, and I can't think of any other cities because I had a group of friends, we volunteered to be on call when there was an accident right. like this, that they, if they, it was Haitian Creole person involved, great program. they would call us. Great program. Yeah. I don't know if it's still in existence, but it was I a great program. I don't know either. Like but I we said, have more Haitian police officers. We have, we have genuinely a, a, a good amount of, of Haitian police officers. One was just honored last month for being the officer of the month. Um, and um, so it's, it's, it's it, the the dynamics have changed of the mm -hmm. Delray Beach Police Department, they, which has challenges every day themselves. Yes, you know, yes. I mean, you know, crime is a challenge. It's not just in Delray; it's everywhere. It's but, everywhere. But it's you know, little Delray Beach has. Yeah, has, we're four by four miles. I didn't realize we're that yeah, small. We, we feel are. a lot more green. Well, we are. We, that's because we are more. <laughs> okay, we, we, we are grander than that. We you. are grander than that. I, I, I'm just like four by four. That's it. That's all we are. Yeah. So, what are the biggest issues that you feel like you? are going to tackle and I know you've been talking to other commissioners yeah I, take, I speak to everybody all the time and are they on board with you well I don't I haven't really spoke to them about this game but you know the, the campaign because mm -hmm. the campaign becomes a you know everybody when you start campaigning everybody starts getting into these little the niches the, 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 the right and, and so they're yes. you know you don't want to say too much here to you. You. yeah so it's, it's, it's very much that <laughs> But I mean, there are some obvious things to me that I think need to be addressed. Mm -hmm. um, when I, my last year on the commission, we raised through the millage, we raised $98 million for the, towards the city budget. Uh, and this year it's going to be $177 million. And in 10 years, that's a big number from 98 to $177 million. And mm -hmm. one, I just, I'm trying to figure out where it all went. I'm money? not saying it was missed. I know, but what happened did, to where it? Where did it all start? Because, you know, I still think that there some of the neighborhood improvement programs have not done what I would have hoped they would have done with that kind of They're money. They're just updating sidewalks and areas that I've complained about when my kids were in middle school. Yeah, I know. And they've been out of high school. I know. Yeah. And so. I understand t things work slowly in government, but that's a, still a lot of money. Yeah. And, you know, I just, I, I wanted to see a more defined plan for how are we going to, you know, improve you know, the neighborhoods, the quality of life in neighborhoods, because that's, it goes back to my rising tide. You know, you, yes. you, if I improve your real estate values, oh, yes. then over here I'm going to be lucky because, yes. you know, you're, you're, you're going to be paying more. I have to pay less. So mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's that rationale. And, and, you know, we still have, uh, we still have to address the, 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 the problem of buying homes in Delray. I mean, it's this the affordable is. housing is just so, so uh, it's, it's, it's become over, almost overwhelming. I can tell you my opinion on that. I think the investors come in, they swoop them all up and then resell them. We should have a, like when we're building the townhomes, I believe the ones right across from the police department, the, right. the two mixed use yes. buildings, 
I don't think investors should have been allowed to buy them. They should have been residents of the city or people who work, because we have so many people who work in the city of Delray who can't afford to live in Delray. That is indeed true. That's why I'm and that is a real problem. with dear life for my little house, Delray. That is, that, well, I, I, think, I think you've hit on something which is it's, it's, it's a problem, not just, by the way, not just mm -hmm. in Delray either. I mean, we live in an, in an area which has just seen such dramatic uh, growth yes. in, in population That's and in real true. estate values. Real estate I mean, values. I mean, I look at, sincerely, I look at little houses, you know, I look at these houses that I, that I used to see all For the like time. For like 69, 79,000, and, yeah, and all now of a sudden, they, they want 1.5 million. Yeah, they want 1.5 million. I say, but it's, it's, it's a lot, you know, and I say, yes, but that's, you know. So the, the problem is when you buy that for 1.5, you, you have really yes. knocked out a lot of potential yes. buyers because yes. they just can't yes. buy. So this is something that this, this next commission is going to have to spend a lot of time thinking about. Well, we will come back and tackle some more of these issues that our beautiful city of Delray is facing. Again, you're watching Real Talk with Darlene P. L. Lewis. My guest today is Tom Carney. He is running for the city of Delray Beach mayor. He wants to be mayor again. And so if you are a registered voter and you are a resident of the city of Delray Beach, we're going to ask you to do your job, do your duty and go out and get the information. I'm not going to say go out and vote for him. I, I am. <laughs> he can, but I'm going to say do your due diligence. You know me, I love that word, do your due diligence. If I refer someone to you for your website or bookkeeping or whatever, do your research, make sure that this person will be able to, do, to meet the criteria as to what your services that you're asking them to render, are they going to develop? Are they going to be able to deliver? So you're watching Real Talk. We'll be right back. P. L. Lewis. And as you already know, I said to you earlier that I had a real treat for you. And yes, indeed, I do. I am here with the future mayor of the city of Derry Beach, Tom Carney. He was mayor once and he's ready to go back and finish what he started or even better yet. Tom, what are we going to do? We're going to improve. Yes. Uh, with new, you know, we have new ideas and we have great crews to work with, mm -hmm. and it's, but there's still stuff that needs to be done from when I left, and we want to complete those as well. So let's let's reminisce. Let's go back, way back when you're a little lad, All right. growing up in where? I grew up in North Miami Beach. I was actually born in Philadelphia. Born but, and raised. Remember the Fresh Prince of Bella? That's right. I remember. Well, he's he's such a talent. Um, <laughs> My, uh, I was born in, in Philadelphia, Philadelphia, but moved down to Florida when I was six weeks old. Oh, wow. And so I spent my formative years, until actually until I was 18 years old. Oh, my God. I went to a uh, Catholic school down there, and okay. then a, a Catholic high school. Okay. And then finished there, and then went to a Catholic college, Spring Hill, <laughs> Spring Hill College in Mobile, Alabama. Well, I was actually, I was actually, as every... I guess good little Catholic altar boy does. We always think we're going to end up priests somewhere, but of anyway, course. but it didn't happen. Uh, and then I did. But what it. did you want to do, though? You went to all this. Oh uh, well, I, you know, I studied you political about science. Being no, I, no, I thought about being a priest, but I always liked. Uh, I, I was a history buff. I loved. Okay. I loved history. Okay. Uh, I loved politics. So, okay. Uh, in my junior year of college, I took a, a year off and went to study in England, nice. where I could actually study international. Politics. That is cool. And which is where I met my wife. Okay. We are still together. It's, we are now, it's 49 oh years we're still together. Oh, that's awesome. You know, 46 and a half of those is married. So okay. we're, you know, we're working on our, into our 47th year. She's great. She is a saint. She because, has to be a saint oh, to put absolutely. up with you. Because I know this man. <laughs> we had the absolutely. opportunity of sharing a building. We didn't work in the same office, no. but you were in the upstairs. No, I'm just kidding. No, that's okay. I'm, I, you know. <laughs> I don't uh, think I have anything bad to say about you. Oh, well, listen, we're, she is really wonderful, and uh, and she is a saint, and I am I thank myself every day, you know, that I'm married to this woman because she's really great, uh, and she's provide. We have two great children too. I should add my so daughter. Maybe 
we'll do another show on what kept you guys together for 49 years. <laughs> Her patience largely, I think, you know, but... <laughs> but so, you listen. Uh, I, well, I'm not, I'm not stupid, <laughs> so I am not stupid. So we went, uh, I came back in my junior year there. Then I went to law school in Boston. I went to Boston College Law School. Okay. Uh, I then went to uh, Georgetown University to do an LLM in tax and started working in Washington on Capitol Hill. Nice. I worked as a tax lawyer on, on Capitol Hill. Oh. Uh, and uh, then I came down to Florida. My father wasn't well, so I really came down to Florida to work with him for a couple mm -hmm. of years. I was only going to be here for three years. Of course. And, it, and uh, that was 1984. And then how many years later? It was 1984. <laughs> and, you know, my wife's bags were, you know, vir still, oh, yeah, were, virtually, bags. were virtually packed at the front door to go back based on, I said we were only here three, four years mm -hmm. max. But anyway, we were still there. And she's gotten to love Delray Beach. And um, she's actually half English and half French. Okay. Uh, as I said, I met her over there. Her father's okay. French, her mother's okay. English. Okay. And, um, so, parlez-vous français? Bien sûr. Okay. Un petit peu. Si Moi nécessaire. aussi, un peu. Oui. I can survive. Like, I have survival French. Mais vous parlez créole. <laughs> oh, très bien. Ouais. Je parle créole. Mais ça suffit. Et créole. Ça oh, suffit, non. madame. Well, C'est vrai. So, um, and so, I, and then during, and so, so I, I went to, to law school there. As I said, and then I came down to work for my mm -hmm. father. I'm still here. I got involved in banking okay. and law. Okay. So I was. Uh, I, I kind of ran a bank for a few years, and then uh, you know, began to law. Then I joined all these boards in Delray. <laughs> yes. And, and kind of worked my way up to where I am today. Yes. You know, but I've been involved in a variety of charitable things and th through my life, and, um, and and still am. Uh, I'm involved with a hospital in Haiti in, in Milo, as oh, a matter Milo. of fact. Oh, okay. Yeah, nice. Sacré Cœur Hospital. Okay. Um, and uh, which was, by the way, featured very, very prominently after the earthquake. I mean, very, very prominently. Nice. Um, and we did tremendous things there, and it's a great operation. Um, so, you know, I've, 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 I've been around, and I, I, I stay around, and I have made a lot of great friends, and, you know, I, I try to read everything I can. I try to meet as many new people as I can. Yes. Uh, I wish I spoke French better, but I, you know. but that's okay. Your wife and your son can interpret for you. They and do, you and have other, I'm sure you have other people on your board, your committees that you're involved in that speak French. They, they can help you. That's don't right. don't try to kill yourself. That's it's right. like with me and my broken up French. I go into Creole. If I know the person speak English, I speak English. I have a few clients that speak Spanish, and I know survival Spanish. Right, so that's right. That's uh, my Spanish is survival <laughs> Enough Spanish. Enough Spanish to ask them their name and so forth. Key information that I need, and then I'm like, okay, that's it. No more. Well, that's what it is. So I've, I've, I've largely, with the exception of the few years I spent up in, in Boston mm -hmm. and, and in the uh, three years in Washington, You've I'm a Floridian. I yeah, am a, you you know, I'm not, not a native. Six weeks. I was six weeks old. I'm not a native. Hold my on. two, my I, two younger brothers were born here, so they're natives. Hold on. I thought after 10 years <laughs> you're a native. You're considered I, well, native, Well, I, right? I think so, except the native will tell you you're not a native. Oh, you know, they're well. gonna, you know, say, I would like them to tell me I'm not a native. Well, I've been here 41 years. Well, as so. I said, I, I've, I've, been, I've been in here since... You and I are going to coin each other right. natives. We're done. We so, don't care yeah. what they say. I've spent, <laughs> I would say, you know, 62 of my adult, of, of yes. 62 years here. Yes. And I've spent, You're a native. So, yeah, uh, so, you probably know more about Delray than the ones who are calling themselves natives who were born A very here. good friend of my father's. Mm -hmm. In fact, my father and he dated my mother and my aunt. He did not, my, he did not end up marrying my aunt. Mm -hmm. But they dated uh, mm -hmm. when they were both in, in school in Philadelphia. And he came down here to start a pharmacy. And so we used to drive it from Miami to Delray. This is in 1955, oh 56, God. We 57. didn't have expressways. There were no expressways. <laughs> Up US 1 the whole way. It was a, a great little trip. And um, we, we, we would come. I mean, we're, we're, where Lake Ida was, you know, there was nothing there. Yeah, I mean, we used rough. to take the little pennies and put them on the railroad track to, to watch the trains go and to, to squish the pennies. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, there were, there were actually critters living in that yes. in that I, in that I, I read I forgot who it was they did a whole historic they did a book of Delray history and they have the dirt roads and oh yeah on my street two blocks over I had the privilege of meeting and chatting with um Rosetta Miss Rosetta before she, was great. she passed away, she told me history. So on my walk, that's why I was complaining about the sidewalks because I'm a walker. I like to walk yep. the city. So on my walk, I have to make sure I pivot her street and walk towards her after I'm done because then if I catch her at the doorstep, 
I'm well, not going to be walking It's anymore. wonderful looks. I do, Rosetta. She was wonderful. Yeah. The one I used to see a lot was Spencer Pompey. I didn't now, have the Spencer Pompey used to come to some of my housing authority meetings. Oh, nice. And, um, and he, uh, he would be, because he was group part of elders, and we would, we would sometimes have breakfast together with, it, with his group. And um, it was very, um, he, he was a wonderful man. He, yeah. was, he was a wonderful man. And when I first ran, I remember somebody saying that Mrs. Pompey had one of my political signs on her yard, oh and that was God, and that was like a like, big oh. that was a big deal. Yes, that was of a course, big deal to have a political course. sign on Mrs. Pompey's yes, yard. So, yes. uh, yeah. So that I've been, you know, I've I've known Delray for a long time, yeah. and as I say, most of my adult life really has been in Delray. And, and I can see why you'd want to run again, because not only after your first when you left office in 2013. You were you didn't say okay I'm I'm the mayor I'm no longer the mayor and you went about your business as usual you were still on boards you were still I was still um, active, volunteering yes. you were very active I was still active and and you know and, and as I said I represented clients in front of boards all the time and I've always worked with the boards I mm -hmm. never really you know and many of the things I asked I always tried to work within the rules that were set up yes. by because there's a reason why the rules the, were set and, and as I said I, as I prefaced in, in the earlier segment the um, we're, we're lucky to have a very talented staff, and they're yes. pretty smart, and yes. you know, and patient, and you know, they do teach this old dog a few tricks, <laughs> new, new tricks every once With in a while. With the technology, yes. all so the changes, they, they do, and well, they're smart because they're, they, they obviously. Uh, they, they, they will bring up things which I hadn't thought of, saying, well, the yeah. reason we do it this way is because, and yes. I'll say, says, you know, that's really, that's that really very sense. good. That really is very good. See, that's, okay, I like that you brought that up. Because a lot of times, it's like with me, when I'm doing a business evaluation, I want to go in there and like, the reason you're not making your quarters or you're not making this is because of that. No, I like to sit down and say, let's have a talk. What's going on? Why do you have this then this step available for the staff? Why do you have this? Why do you have that? And when they explain it to me, I'm like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. But maybe we can pivot it a little mm -hmm. or maybe we can do this. You don't go into somebody's house and want to revamp the whole thing. No. There's a reason why they have their sofa where it's at right. and the living room, you know, set up the way it's set up. They have their reasons. Find out first. And I feel like that's what I'm hearing from you. And, then, and by the way, I think I would add on the commission, I could, I, I mean, staff would, I mean, staff really looks for direction. Yes. And, and, and I think I'm, I'm quite capable. And you I, get their opinion. And I, I listen, I mean, but it's, it's interactive. And I mean, I, I do believe that, that the commission needs to, you know, really research what they're trying to do. Staff mm -hmm. has their views. You yes. know, the public has their views. Yes, and you're not uh, going to please everybody. And the commission really needs to digest all of these yes. different, you know, ingredients mm -hmm. uh, in the in the argument. So we can have a nice. So piece we can of come cake. up with something. <laughs> and, right, and have a piece of pie that we can all eat. So it, it's um, but I do think that it's important to have members of the commission that are you know, really can take it to the next level in terms of uh, competence and expertise and historical knowledge. And So earlier I said we we're going to talk about, there's probably a million issues, but three major ones that you feel like with the help of the residents and the staff and the commissioners, when you are elected mayor, what you'd want to work on. You know, and if you don't want to get into no, detail, no, no, you don't I'm have gonna, to. I'm, but this I, is I, real are, talk. I'm, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you some broad. <laughs> yeah, something things. broad. But okay. We obviously have a real bad congestion problem in Delray, Whew. and you know I have represented a lot of developers, so that someone you can't say, well, you're he's anti-development. I'm not, but I also have been involved in the preservation people, mm -hmm. and and you know. But, if it was for them, we'd have no buildings that they just correct. But trees but, and but on the same time, <laughs> they've, they've tempered some of our stuff. I yes. had this conversation with someone earlier today. And I said, when you come to Delray Beach, what's the first thing you do? Well, you take your neighbors or who the visitor down Atlantic Avenue. Why? Mm -hmm. Because Atlantic Avenue is a jewel. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's an absolute jewel. So we want to make sure that we keep these jewels in place, mm -hmm. but still, you know, making sure that the property rights are rec uh, mm -hmm. represented. There's got to be ways we can yes. fashion it because right now there's factions on both sides. I don't know what the answer is yet. I'm working on what I think a, a, a good solution would be. Um, I think that we have. Um, I mean, development is if with, development is important because if you don't develop, you 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 stagnate. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we have the congestion coming in from the west to the to the east of the city yes. right now is really it takes too long. very very hard. It takes too and so long we have to, to be figuring cross Congress. <laughs> yeah, and so I, you know, I don't know if the answer is a, a, a pause for a bit to see because right now I don't know with all the planned buildings we have. 
whether our infrastructure can really support this. I mean, you know, we've had traffic studies, we have these studies, we have all these great studies. What have the studies say about Swinton? Because I'm not too far from Swinton, and for me to cross Swinton on First Avenue it from is. Northwest First to no I was like. I mean, not, not Northwest First yeah, Avenue, Third Street. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. To cross Swinton, right. it's like I know. And then back in the days, I'm gonna I'm going to confess on TV when case before the church blocked off their yard, we used to come through there yes. to get to Lake Ida because we didn't want to stay under the light on the Swinton. It was it became so congested. And it, and it's so you you talk. I mean, there are things that I say that, that so like obviously congestion is something I'm I'm really worried about. And how do I address? How do I address the needs to to, to build mm -hmm. with the with the residents' need to be able to move? To so be able to walk and cross yeah, the street, to, to, yeah. take your kids on, on the stroller or a bike. Yeah, you know, and I, and so and so I do think we want to. There are certain great parts of Delray we need to to in preserve. Mm -hmm. Yet there are other areas of Delray we need to encourage. You know, development. I think, okay. you know, Congress Avenue and things like that has, has been there yes. forever, and yes. we talked about it. Yes. I was part of a task force yes. 100 yes. years ago, yes. and. Jim and I talked about Congress. Yes, yeah. and we, we there's still great possibilities there, for which 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 Mixed I use. which ultimately I think will help with our schools, mm -hmm. will help with everything because mm -hmm. you'll get new tax dollars mm -hmm. in, and you know corporate type people moving in town. They're going to demand different things are going to happen, mm -hmm. and everything again. Well, we should see benefit to all. So, but I'm saying you, you, there are three. There's like. Okay, 33. so we covered Congress. That's one. We covered Atlantic Avenue because it's very congested. I can't cross on First. Right. Like, I can't cross on, on what is it, Northwest First, exactly, by yep. City Hall. I can't cross Atlantic Avenue in the mornings or in the yep. afternoon. So I have to make a right and then go on Second. Thank God for the light. Yep. But it's not a turning light. Nope. It's just green. So make my left there in order to get to Swinton sometimes. Yep. And no, it's, I know it's it's, it's, it's an inconvenience. So I mean, but I'm saying these are all issues that we really have to 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 look at. But again, it's a look that you have to look at from ten thousand yes, feet in the air. Yes, and what we have yes. been prone to do is to to look at this this corner and this corner and this mm -hmm. corner, and not try to look at it as a part of a big puzzle mm -hmm. to see how everything is going to fit. And you know, some of the issues that I had with Atlantic Crossing, and I didn't actually support it when it first came out, is that I was worried about the grid that we were going to have mm -hmm. there because. You know, they took away the, the, there was a right turn lane off of northbound Federal Highway to go east on Atlantic. They got yes. rid of that. Yes. Um, and then they were building this big thing here. And I'm saying, but the, you're forcing people through the marina district. You're forcing oh. people through these other, so it's, uh, it's, it's, it's like an overall, I look at things from very much of an overall, yes. Yes. you know, plan. And I think that if, and, and I think we certainly have the talent to, to solve these, these issues if we want to really work hard towards it. I'm going to work very hard towards what it. I would like and, I'm, you, and I'm pretty sure my other commissioners share what, what I, I like think. What I'd like you and the other commissioners to work hard on is I need lighter streets. The streets are too dark. When they removed the wooden poles and went to concrete poles, they got taller. <laughs> and if I'm walking on a sidewalk, I can't see a couple feet ahead of me. You know, it was, it's funny. You should, we, when I was in, very early on, I was involved with... The uh, you know art in the alley which we yes. did in Osceola yes. and I was one of the yes. first one I went to the yes. very first one yes. I was part of put, helping put that together and supporting it and um, and we found that once you opened up these areas and everything such that you know crime went down because you know there's 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 visibility there's visibility yeah and the same with why yeah. I, I you think don't have we people need people loitering in your right. alleyways and, I, and that's the road and that's why I think we need more lights mm -hmm. I think you know that the, these are things that we should be doing and there's pockets in OCL. Osceola. Osceola. <laughs> I don't know why I say very, that. very, very famous Seminole Indian Osceola. Oh, I should remember that. I'll tie. See, that's how I remember names. I'll tie it to something I can remember. But I think Martin Luther King, um, North West the North side, has mm -hmm. the a walk because I can walk on that street yep. and it's they have lower light poles. And but I think that part of that was decorative. Decorative. I don't think it was because well, we they, wanted they, to I walk think, the but, but I mean, if you you remember that that uh, that street. 15 years ago, yeah. I and mean, it was not, I mean, they have really improved. They have improved they, they, that street. And, and the neighbors who have lived along that street have done a great yes. job with their streetscape. Their, yes. yes, they have done a But that's due to the, was it CDBG grant? I can't remember what grant it was, but there's several community redevelopment grants right. that were available for them to get um, corners. It was a community block grant, but it, you, know, CBG, you were correct. Yeah. But, it, but the neighbors really took it upon themselves. They also put in their own, there was a lot of money that went in there from also oh, yeah, the from city and the CRA and, and, CRA, yes. and 
they did a, a fabulous, yes, a yes. fabulous job there. I like that. I like walking around and looking at the different plants and flowers and the um, landscaping. I, I just like the greenery, and I feel like um, downtown. I haven't really been going to downtown because I can't walk. A lot the of people you are can't walk. Over. You can't walk. You I can't park. I, was, you can't. I think I was part of the people who uh, on planning and zoning that agreed to the eight feet sidewalk, yep. and now we can't use it because they're all tables. I don't know. But you see, you see why I I, I, I reference that something that I bring to the table, which others may not have, mm -hmm. to, to the extent I do, and that is historical knowledge. And yes. I do think that historical knowledge counts. It does. It does. And that, coupled with the, you know, my competence, is 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 I think good features. And you know, I'm not. I, I do my own research. I've always been up the one who does my own research. I don't. I mean, I listen to the city attorney, I listen to staff, yeah. I listen to the president, but I will read my own contracts when there's a con I read everything. Yes, you, you know? have to. Because and how can you represent the client? Correct. If you and don't so know? when I when I so when you so it's it's a different way for me. It's, I bring a different skill set up there, and that's why I, I think it's time. I mean, I really I'm, I'm I'm anxious to get back up there and really do some good things. What I'm hearing you say is not so much what you're ready to go do, but it's you're willing to work with the residents and the city staff and the commissioners and all the different boards so that you can come to a concession that's going to benefit most because you're not going to please everybody. No. That is absolutely impossible. No. And we all know that. We're uh, all sane here, right? <laughs> we know we can't. I, I am. You're saying uh, I believe <laughs> that the, the engagement is as we I believe in all of that engagement and I do think it will help the entire city I and I don't know if it's because since I moved my office from the city of Delray mm -hmm. because the price of um, square footage was like crazy I'm not paying fifty dollars a square foot for a small office so I was I moved to Boynton but we won't I, hold that against you, Darlene. You still are. I, you still I, pay your taxes still pay there, taxes and there. you're still a Delray resident. Yes, and we still love you. Yes, and, you know. Yes. And so you should come back and serve on a board. You may have a lot of. Fun. Oh Lord, <laughs> I don't know if I have enough time to allocate. <laughs> Zoe's not going to keep me to ten o'clock at night. That was a nightmare. We used to have where the um, residents could come in, like a city hall, like type, a charrette. Like we a charrette. Them charrettes. Yes, yeah. and I, I'm going to honestly say, since I moved my office, I haven't been really participating because city commission meeting was at four afternoon, yeah. and then I think it went to five, then it went to six, then it's back to five. I think, right? Five, Very strange. Five? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's like leaving your we office at 4 o'clock. We meet at 4 o'clock four, four now. We, it's, 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 still four. At, it's at 4. It's at 4. That's yeah. what I thought. And, and it's hard to... for working people to get to the meetings. There's no question about it. I think that's done purpose. I don't know. I'm, that's uh, me. You know. That's me. I don't understand. I guess city employees get up at 5 or 4 o'clock. Yes. And I think to that benefit, that's fine. But I think... I don't know how their, the pay structure was when they had to stay late for meetings. I hope they, mm. there was some overtime component to it because there certainly be. should be. There, there yeah. should be. Yeah, there, there should be. be. Anything over eight hours should be overtime. But we have so much to talk about. As you can see, I'm biased towards the city. This is the only city I really know. I mean, I've gone to Lake Worth downtown, and it's walkable. It's not biased when it's truthful. <laughs> it's, it's not. But I have to honestly say I haven't really been going to downtown like I used to. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm in a position where I can walk to downtown. Yeah, I know you are. Yeah. And it's hard because it's congested. I'm navigating through tables, and I feel bad. These people are probably having a nice, simple dinner. You know, dinner. You, you have a wave of diners like at 637. Then you have another whole group that comes in at 9. Nine yeah. And then there's the whole the 11 o'clock after yes. 11. And it is packed all, all, the time. all the time. Yes. All the time. All the time. And where I'm at, I can hear the music sometimes. I don't complain about it because if I close my door and I'm inside the house, I don't hear it. But if I'm in my back backyard or if I'm in the front yard, I hear it. Well, sometimes the music gets a little loud. Uh -huh. But I try not to complain because I, as a business owner, <laughs> no, I, we, we're not open till 3 o'clock, right? No, I mean, I'm, and I'm the same. I rarely, unless yeah. it really is intrusive, yeah. I let... In, in that regard, I'm, I'm kind of a libertarian in that regard. Yeah. I let people do what they, you know. And it, I think it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I don't even think Sunday night is that loud. No, the Sunday, they, they have to, no, Sunday's not, it's supposed yeah, to be earlier. Yeah, so it's earlier Thursday, and, Friday, yeah. Saturday. So I'm okay with that. Yeah. But, oh, my God. Tom, thank you so very much. Oh, thank you for let including me in your know, conversation. Let everybody know what it is that you're, you're looking to do for the beautiful city of Derry. Look into well, your camera I, I, and tell them. You know, TomCarneyForMayor.com is a website that's going to be up and running in the next week or so. I got, you know, I got into this late, <laughs> and um, as, as I often do. And uh, so we're going to be outlining a whole lot of different things uh, that we want to see the city. And we're also going to be inviting you to 
tell me what's important to you because yes. you know as 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 much as I'm around and you're around, we don't know everything, and we do need. And it's sometimes the little things you don't know and you need to know, which are sometimes they're easy fixes. Mm -hmm. And you want to get that little thing fixed before it becomes a big thing, yes. you know? Yes. And so I'm going to encourage everybody to go to, you know, TomCarneyForMayor.com. I'll have all my platform up there. Okay. And um, I would love to come back if you, you, you would ever have me back. If you can make time. <laughs> I'll make time for you. I mean, I, I, oh, I don't you. think anybody ever says no to you, do they? I mean, uh, they try. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so very much, Tom. No, thank you for having me. Ladies and gentlemen, this was Real Talk, and it was an honor and a privilege to have the opportunity to speak with our future mayor so he can voice what it is that he's so passionate about and why is he looking to run again. He was mayor back in the 20, what, 10, 11, 12, yeah. 13, and now yeah. he wants to do it again. It's because he's passionate about the city. If you are a registered voter, you are a citizen of the beautiful city of Delray Beach. I am biased. You guys know this. Go out and vote. But before you do that, go on his website. Give him an opportunity for him to hear your voice. Invite him to your meetings. If you're having a group meeting, right? I'd love to go. He would love, love to, to go. go and hear what it is. How can we make the city better for us? Keep in mind, it is impossible for everybody to be pleased. But let's say you want 15 things. You have 15 things on your list. And somebody else has 15 other things. And some of those cross. You'd be surprised if everybody get together and voice their opinion. He'd be like, oh, with one solution, he probably could meet 10 out of those 15. That's better than nothing. But if closed mouth don't get fed. So if you don't speak, if you don't say what's bothering you, what's hurting you, like me in my dark streets and sidewalks, <laughs> nobody's going to be able to help you. This was Real Talk with Darlene Pia Lewis. Thank you very much for tuning in. Real Talk.